Why, hello there. My name is Mountain, and today I'd like to talk to you about this. And what is this, you may ask? Well, this is the Aviator Wallet by Aviator, and they're a Bavaria, Germany-based manufacturer of some minimalist wallets uh, that are not much bigger than a credit card or an ID card. And in fact, the Aviator Wallet's main claim to fame is probably exactly that. It's dense, compact nature that is almost exactly the dimensions of a credit card or an ID card, albeit in the you know, length and height um, dimensions and not necessarily the thickness dimensions. And it's probably the smallest 2D footprint you can achieve in any kind of practical EDC wallet. Now, beyond that, it's other claims to fame as this high degree of customizability, both in terms of the materials you can get this in, the colorways, and also like the different kind of options that you get, like including the cash strap and whether it has a coin tray or not, et cetera, et cetera. And finally, the last part of this is that it has the ability to carry uh, coins or other small objects in addition to cash or cards if you get this optional coin tray uh, accessory that comes with it. Now, it does have a couple of areas of improvement, and those include things like a fairly high degree of friction in some key interactions, such as like getting cards out from the middle of the stack here. Um, getting money in and out of this uh, key clip area and actually getting coins in and out of here. And I know that sounds a little bit um, uh, more than like a big interaction, a big friction uh, for a while, but we'll talk about this. Like I think everything in moderation here. And also the other kind of maybe area for improvement, I think, is that this is a very thick boy when filled with lots of cards, um, which makes it for a pretty chunky thing. It looks great as an object, but when you're wearing this in your pants pocket or whatever, like you definitely will notice it here. And maybe the other last thing is that the coin tray's carrying capacity might be a little bit less and its no noisiness level might be a little bit more than you might be expecting when you first purchase this wallet. Um, now, before we go any further, I think there's a couple things I should mention, which is that Aviator has sent me this wallet for a review, and I've been using it as my daily EDC for about a month, now maybe a little bit more than a month. Uh, you've probably seen this in some of my recent bag review videos here. Now, while this, this wallet was sent to me for review, I want to be clear the opinions expressed in this video are my own. Aviator won't have a chance to review this video before it goes live, and um, yeah. With that out of the way, let me give you a little bit more information about this wallet before we jump into the review. So as I mentioned at the outset, um, one of the strengths is this high degree of customizability and the options you have for this. Like this particular one is made out of aluminum, but you can also get it in titanium and like carbon fiber, I think. And then there's a bunch of colors within each of those different material ways. And you can also customize things like this cash strap, like whether you have like this, you know, cash holder thing and then I saw there's a couple different patterns, like a Canadian flag logo for some reason. Um, but I mean, everybody loves Canada, so I mean, great to have a Canadian flag option. Uh, also, like the uh, material for the inner uh, inner frame, and then like whether you want to have the coin tray or not, um, et cetera, et cetera. And the wallet itself uh, comes with a screwdriver that lets you actually, uh, this a little screwdriver here, that lets you... Um, undo these torque bolts and then you can adjust the tension on this uh, strap that lets you carry anywhere from one to 20 cards in here, which I thought was kind of a cool option here. In my testing and general EDC, I usually carry between seven to nine cards in here, plus a few slips of cash and then a couple of coins or whatever. Um, the prices on these vary like anywhere from like 49 euro, I think was like the cheapest one I saw up to like 369 euro for the titanium version. This particular one, which is the Obsidian Black, uh, with like an acrylic glass frame and then the recycled plastic cash clip. Retails, I think, for like 65 euro or so here. Um, and the last thing to mention is it does have, I guess, like RFID blocking functionality, I guess, because it has like a metal plate on both ends, I guess. Um, I didn't test that because it's not an important uh, feature for me, but uh, for people who care, like there's, I noticed that on their website. So with that out of the way, let's talk about who this wallet is for and who it's not for. So in terms of who this wallet is for, I think that the first kind of group that's going to be for, it's going to be for minimalists with a dialed in carry, lovers of like distinctively designed industrial objects, or lovers of like cute, thick, chunky things who want as minimal of a 2D footprint as possible. Um, all of those things hopefully should be self-evident when you look at this thick, chunky boy with its very distinctive industrial design here. I think this is also a good choice for people who generally only carry credit or plastic cards, and I'll talk about the plastic part, is, or, or metal, I guess, but not paper is the point, cards, and either no or only a few bills, or people who want a minimalist wallet but still want to carry something, they occasionally want to access like 
that's a little bit thicker like coins or maybe a flat key or a SIM card or something like that. And I think that that's really, you know, the, the commonality between those two groups here is like your main idea is you want to access one or two cards and then everything else, cash, coins, etc., are going to be like sort of just in case things that you want to have with you just in case, but you don't expect to be routinely interacting with them on a daily basis. Now, who this wall is not for is, first of all, people who don't like big, thick, chunky things. There are far flatter walls that will carry the same amount of stuff or close to it uh, that won't feel like a metal brick in your pocket. People who need to carry lots of cash and coins or need to carry just a little bit but need to frequently interact with them, this is not gonna be a great wallet for you. And finally, people who need to carry things like receipts or paper, things like uh, paper, like parking lot validation tickets or whatever, like there's no great way or comfortable way of carrying them inside of this wallet. So next, let's talk about the external appearance and construction of this wallet. The first thing you noticed, as I've mentioned a few times, is this is filled up. Right now, I think I have eight cards in here. This is just generally like around what I carry, like it's a seven to eight. Uh, this is a thick, chunky boy. Compare it to something like the Ridge Wallet, which I have been using for years here, uh, which obviously doesn't have cards in here right now. But if I were to take roughly the equivalent amount of cards, not quite exactly, but um, you can see like there's a there's a, a marked difference in the amount, in the thickness between the two wallets. This is not exact here, and we'll talk about that, right? Um, in a second, why that is. So I like that this just sort of stacks up like this. I often find myself just leaving it on the table and looking at it as an object. It's fun to play with. It's kind of stable and square and chunky or whatever. With any kind of stacked card wallet like this, you're going to see a difference in the thickness that depends on how many embossed cards you have versus how many flat cards you have. A flat card is something like, for example, uh, an ID card where there's no raised printing on it. And then a, and many like metal cards will be flat, metal credit cards. And then like an, uh, uh, an embossed card is something like your standard plastic um, credit card. So I have a mix in here, as you can see, and you can see like there's a little bit of a cant because the embossing actually raises the height of the card. And then um, often like it's sort of just embossed at the bottom, right, with a number and then your name or something like that. So like you'll get a slight angle here. The more embossed cards you have, the thicker the stack for the same number of cards here. And that can't be helped here. Um, but it is something that, you know, again, if you have a bunch of embossed cards, like this is gonna be even thicker than it already is here. Um, when I compare this to something like the Bellroy Apex wallet, which was my main wallet before I started testing this one, you immediately notice that like, even though these carry the same amount of stuff other than the coins, which we'll talk about, like they, they just do it by trading off the dimensions between X, Y, and Z, Z um, in terms of like where uh, you're allocating all of that volume here. Um, so I think that that's you know, something to consider if you want that minimal 2D footprint, like this, this looks very nice. It's just sort of thick here. Um, design is obviously in the eye of the beholder. I like that there's a lot of options and I think with that you're going to be able to kind of find the wallet if this is a style that appeals to you that probably would appeal to you and your personal style sense. For me, the black on black with the rivets, the recycled carbon fiber looking, it's not carbon fiber, it's plastic, but it looks like carbon fiber. Cash clip um, looks great. I like the cute chunkiness. I appreciate that. It reminds me of like the air times nine hours capsule pack is just this unabashedly chunky thing. Um, and then again, all the customizability that lets you choose whether you carry one or 20 cards by like unscrewing these rivets and then moving the strap around is great. And then the ability to carry coins, even though it is a mixed utility, is um, kind of a, a, a nice touch, I think. And then this little pull strap, I like how it's sort of just flush when you put it in there. It, it, it feels like a really nice and dense, compact way of carrying all of these things. Now, there are some things I didn't like about this. And one of those things was the edges are not sharp in that they're going to cut you but they're not like the corners are rounded right but this edge here like if you run your finger along it it doesn't feel the greatest there's a little bit of friction in there and because you're often holding it like this when you go to pull the cards out you feel it here and here and it doesn't feel the greatest and i compare it again to something like the ridge wallet this is my ridge wallet which has been you know used and in, is in old and used but it has like slightly more rounded edges here. So for me, I didn't have that same kind of like sharp, ah, like I feel it as a piece of metal in my hand. Now to be really, really clear, this is not dangerous, doesn't cut my hand or anything like that. Like it's not 
painful or anything. It just kind of, it's a little bit of, a, oh, that's okay. A little bit of an edge there. Um, didn't feel as great. The other thing being metal hard and like just a really chunky um, thing means you can't throw this in the same pocket as like, for example, headphones or your phone or whatever like that, um, because it's going to scratch it up. Like it'll scratch up like my AirPod Pros or like my, and well, it didn't, but I, I could easily have imagined this scratching things like you know, Master and Dynamic NW08s, which have like this case that's notorious for easily scratching if you look at it wrong. So you end up having to carry it in a separate pocket from like things that are delicate to avoid it from scratching or breaking them. That's not a problem you're going to have with like a leather wallet, like the, the Apex, for example, here. Um, and then finally, while I do like the small size and visually the thickness, like this thickness is also kind of a dislike in practice because for the same reason I just mentioned, it's like this big metal brick and you're never going to not notice it. When you put it in your pocket, it looks like a big metal brick. It prints visually like a big metal brick. Like you can't forget about it. If you put it in a shirt pocket, you're not going to forget about it. Even if you put it in a jacket pocket because it's so thick and dense, you're going to feel it. You're never going to forget about it. And again, you compare that to like a flatter wall. This is a different kind of wallet. This is actually not a great wallet to be clear. And I'll talk about that at the end, but like this is the um, Bellroy flip case, I think. Like you can sort of forget about this, even though this is still a hard wallet. Um, definitely like a softer wallet, like the Apex, you can definitely forget about. Um, but this one is just, you, you're not going to forget about it in, in your pocket. And maybe the last thing I'll say about the design is I wasn't a huge fan of like this cutout window here, like it shows a little bit more than um, I guess I was, than I would like walls to show. So again, like this doesn't show anything, like the ridge doesn't show anything, but this one has this cutout window. And the idea is like, it's like a push out for like the top card. Uh, but in reality, like I just used the, the pull strap for that, but that doesn't matter. Cause the point is like, the reason I even have this aviator top card here is because like, if you have like a card or something like that, it just shows whatever that is in here. So this is our credit card. It would show like part of the numbers on there, or if this were an ID card, it would show part of your information on there. And for me, like I felt like that showing the information should be like a purposeful decision. It shouldn't be something that your wallet consistently and constantly broadcasts out. Um, and then there's also a certain amount of exposure that goes on with like the cash being on the back of it here, right? Like that leaves it exposed. And if you don't want people to see how that you're carrying cash with you, like if you have hundreds or something like that, like it's obviously not great for me. This is like the equivalent of us dollars, 40, uh, 40 us dollars. So I don't care about that, but like I did find like it tended to let the cash wear through a little bit here, which was because it's just kind of exposed and it's raised up because it has to be done in quarters, which we'll talk about that in a minute. So next, let's talk about handling cards in this wallet. And I actually have swapped into like some black blank plastic uh, cards that are the same size as a credit card to avoid like showing my information all over the internet. But you know, so you'll notice like right away with that, without the embossing, like the, the thickness of, of the same stack of cards is reduced and they don't have that angle in there. Now, the way you're supposed to access the card, like I said, you could kind of theoretically push it out like this. I just use the cash strap here. And um, the way that air, uh, air, uh -huh. aviator shows that you're able, you're supposed to be able to do this. And you're supposed to pull it out and then you're supposed to fan it out like this. And you can pick the card that you want, like this one, and then, and then put it back in. And then like, you can kind of like, oh, stuff it all back in. In reality, I found that that didn't really work that well for me, especially when I was in a hurry at the cashier or whatever. And generally, if I wanted to access something from the middle, what I would end up having to do is take the whole stack out, fan it out like this, take my card, put it there, bring it back, put it in here, and then try and slip it back inside of here. And as you're really careful about this for reasons I'll explain later, so that the coins don't drop out. Now, that's okay. Um, and if you only have to do that sometimes, like it was a fine, it was fine, I could live with it. Um, this, the fanning thing just didn't really work. I just felt like there was too much, you know, like just wasn't a great interaction. It was just too finicky around down here. What I did find worked well is being able to access the top card really easily and getting that back in there and being able to access the bottom card fairly easily and be able to get that back in there. And the reason that it's easy to kind of get them in and out is if we are to look here, let's see, you can see there's sort of like a, let's see if I can show it here. There's sort of like a bevel you can see on the plastic edge right there. And that lets you slip the card in. If we, yeah, you can see there, there's a bevel and it just, easily slips right in. I like that a lot. And then the same on the bottom here, like you're just on a bevel per se, but there is a plastic or acrylic glass, whatever frame. And it's easy to just kind of push the card in 
up and then it just guides right in. So what I found is if you only need to use like two cards, like maybe an ID card and, and a credit card or a credit card or whatever, vice versa, um, and then the rest are just sort of in case cards, then this actually works out pretty well. Another thing that I found was really a fun interaction is when you slide the stack closed, the strap just provides this nice bottom stop and it kind of locks up at the top here because you've got this little tab. And it's just like a really fun interaction, like just ah, like that. Now, right now it's not doing this, but every once in a while I would find that the strap would actually get caught, especially when I, were in a, when I was in a hurry, it would kind of get caught like, uh, sometimes it would get twisted like this or something like that and I have to take an extra second and then like untwist it. This only happened when I was in a hurry hurry, but you know, sometimes you're trying to get in and out in a hurry. And this is a wallet that sometimes doesn't really reward in a hurry type of interactions here. Um, I like that the wallet, as I mentioned, is uh, you can adjust the tension by removing all these screws and then you can adjust this to carry anywhere from one to 20 cards. I have this set sort of in the middle setting. You can set it a little bit looser and then it's a little bit easier to get the cards in and out, but that comes at a cost of the coin tray, which I will mention here in a moment. Um, what I like is that the cards were always held really securely. You don't have to worry about them ever falling out as long as you set your tension right. Um, it comes, you can specify when you uh, buy the wallet what you want the default tension to be set at, but you can adjust that after the fact. Um, there is a downside to this design beyond what I've kind of talked about, and that's like trying to store things like, um, as I mentioned here, this is like a parking lot, parking validation ticket, or these are made of paper or magnetic paper, and then trying to like slip them in here. Like you can see here, it gets caught. This happens all the time, and then you destroy, see, this happens. And it was such a frictionful interaction, and I hated it, and it just ruined it, and it's so hard to get. I destroyed quite a few, well, two before I learned my lesson, not quite a few, I'm not that silly. Um, but there's just no good way, and I ended up carrying those separately because like, there's no good way of carrying that in here. Same thing like paper point cards or whatever, I didn't find was like really um, very helpful uh, or very capable of carrying inside of here. So next, let's talk about the coin holder, which is I think the other kind of distinctive feature of, of this wallet here. So the way that the coin holder works is there's this tray and I'm gonna slide it out all the way here so you can take a look at it first. Um, there's this tray and it's an optional accessory, um, but you can you know leave it on or off as you like. So if you take it off, uh, obviously it gets a little bit thinner like that. Um, and then if you put it in, it gets thicker. Um, and it's fairly, uh, it's, it's thick by the standards of this wallet, but it has to be because it has to be able to accommodate coins. Now there's a couple things right away that I noticed about this coin tray. And the first one is the inside surface area is not nearly as big as I expected it to be. I expected it to be a rectangle all the way. And um, the reason that it's not, as you can see, it has like this sort of beveling here. And that is so that when you slide it into this wallet, you can see here on the side, you can see we're sliding, 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 and then it stops and it locks in right here. Sorry, right here. And that is, I understand why they have it like that. Um, it also like provides like, you with this little, sorry, the way you pull it out is there's this little tab here and it just lets you hook your finger in there and pull that out. But it has several implications. The first one is, let's take a look here. Here's like two 100 Japanese yen coins. So you can see if the tray were the full width here, you can fit two here. And then that means you can fit you know, one, two, three, maybe four, so eight coins in here. Uh, but in reality, as soon as you can see, because of this just minor, um, you know, minor change in width here, you can only you can't fit two coins side by side. You can only fit them staggered. That means at most you can fit one, two, three, four, five. I think is actually what I ended up being able to fit in here. Five, maybe six. So significant decrease in capacity in what is already a fairly small um, kind of uh, carrying capacity. But more on that in a second here. Now, the next thing you're gonna notice here is that this is lined in a kind of velour, which you can also buy separately, but it comes with default in the coin tray. And the reason they do that is to try and solve a problem that you're gonna notice right away when you put something inside of this uh, coin tray here. And you load your coin tray up, cool, ready to go. Oh, what is that? It just rattles so much. and. So obviously they realize that's a problem, so they try and solve that by putting this velour layer. The problem is that doesn't do anything because the rattle comes from hitting the side walls 
which aren't lying in velour, and even if they were, it doesn't matter, and from the coins hitting each other, which no amount of lining is gonna be able to muffle. So that was obviously a problem. It's not a pleasant thing at all. I was like, there's no way that that's usable. The way I solved it is by folding a bill in two quarters and then putting it, putting them on here, that exerts kind of like an upward pressure, and then you're able to kind of fit this inside of here like this, and then it doesn't rattle as much. Now, <laughs> what that means is you got to, first of all, fold up some paper and put it in there or like a uh, some money or something like that. And as soon as you use it, it's going to rattle. Uh, overall, like there's like th there's several things that weren't great about this for me. I like the option of having coins. I think that the amount of utility is really just like very much just in case. And like three or four coins might make a difference or it might not make a difference. I guess it's like to pay like an emergency parking or something like if you live in a place where you can cover the cost of parking with three or four coins, depending on how big your coins are. Um, or maybe you want like one slip of cash folded up for absolute emergencies and then you know, maybe that kind of works well. Uh, if you go and pay with a bill, and then you get a bunch of coins and this happens, you're not gonna fit the change in here. Like, it, again, it can hold like four, maybe six coins, not even six, four or five coins. So that, for me, doesn't obviate, doesn't do away with the need of having to carry like a separate coin pouch or something like that, or something to carry coins in if I'm gonna use cash. So I think that the story of this coin tray is this really much just in case kind of thing, which, whether that is worth the significant trade-off in thickness or not, I guess is something that you have to decide for yourself. Um, it's just generally what I found out is I was like, this is not something to be interacted with. Often it's just sort of in case. Much like the same way as like I found with the cards, like the top and the bottom card are the ones I mainly interact with. Everything else in the middle is like carrying it just in case. Coins are carried just in case. Now, a couple other things they talk about that you can do in here, they show this like maybe having like a flat key or something like that inside of it. Um, in reality, I couldn't find any keys that were really flat enough to fit in here because like all modern keys tend to, or that I have anyway, tend to have like a plastic kind of grippy part, which is too thick to fit in here. Um, and then if you have a car, you still have to carry like the big, you know, car chunky thing. So like you might as well carry a keychain and carry your keys on there. Um, I fit like a SIM card or an SD card and like a SIM tool, like in a plastic little case in there. Not the SIM, I'm sorry, the SIM card in a little plastic flat case. Uh, SD card won't fit obviously in a plastic case, but you can put it in there just by itself. Um, if you put like a SIM card in there loose, it's gonna fall out. Um, and that's really kind of what I found with this coin tray. Uh, it was uh, interesting, but there's actually one more thing I will mention here, which is the coin tray faces to the bottom like this and you access the cards from the top here. So right now the coin tray is facing down. And as I mentioned, I often found that I needed to take out the whole stack of cards to access one in the middle. And then that means that this is actually fairly loose depending on how you have your tension set. So I have my tension set fairly, you know, like I said, like appropriately for what is recommended for this number of cards here. Um, but I still found that it was really easy for the um, coin tray to kind of work its way loose as I was interacting with the stack of cards or more pressingly, so when I go to put this back in, what you're supposed to do is, because there's two layers, right? There's the coin tray layer, and then there's the top layer where the cards go in. And what you should do is lift just this top layer and this bottom layer while keeping the tension of the coin tray um, kind of tight so the coins don't fall out. But when you're in a hurry, again, it's user error, but when you're in a hurry and you're a cashier or whatever, it's really easy to loosen accidentally the, uh, the wrong layer or as you're kind of stuffing everything in and you can see like you get like the coins will fall out the bottom because you've kind of uh, inadvertently pushed it out or you, you released too little tension or whatever. It's absolutely user error, but it's an error that happens a lot when you're interacting in a hurry because this is just kind of like a very tightly held together. Um, I mean, tightness is adjustable, but it's, it's still held together by an elastic band and it, sort of relies on you getting the tension on everything kind of right. So I did find that I had the problem sometimes through my own fault, just interacting too quickly with the coins dropping out as I was trying to get things in and out, and especially the fact that the coin tray is pointing down makes it easier for that to happen. With that out of the way, let's talk about the cash strap. So what I like about this cash strap, first of all, is the appearance. Like I like that it's customizable. I like that it's a little bit fancy. 
uh, like this is the old Ridge wallet that I had and maybe they have like cash strap. I think they have like another plastic piece in the newer ones, but like my old one was like this, just this rubber strap thing. And this one, I like that there's different options it's customizable or whatever. I like that it holds the cash really securely. This is not going anywhere. It's not gonna fall out accidentally. And once you get the cash in there, it's like compact. Um, again, some thickness, but it's compact here. And it works with a variety of different currencies. Now, I have Japanese yen in here, but it'll work with Euro, US dollars, etc. Now, there are some things you need to think about. First of all, it's very tight interaction. And part of the tightness comes from the fact that this, the money needs to be folded into quarters. One, two, three, four, and then slipped inside. And not only is it folded into quarters, which makes it thicker, but then you need to kind of raise this up, slide it in there, making sure not to get caught on the sides here. And that is a little bit of a frictionful interaction. Uh, not, you know, prohibitively so, but it's definitely more frictionful than others. Now, if you look at something like the Ridge wallet, for example, uh, it's generally possible to fold the money into thirds and get it fitted in here. And even though these are the same kind of width, the reason why you can f do thirds in here and not in here is because you can see that the cash clip only covers part of the width of this surface. And then there's parts left on either side for the elastic band to run down through into the metal uh, into the body of, of, of the wallet. Um, and again, something like the Bellroy Apex wallet, I can fold the cash into thirds and it's really easy to slip it. So you can see it's thirds versus uh, quarters and it just slips really easily into the pocket in here and disappears there. And it is significantly easier to fold cash. I have found into thirds than into quarters is not only that, like each crease you make, increases the chances like a particularly finicky vending machine is going to reject your bill because it has too many creases or whatever. Um, one other thing I'll mention is like, as I mentioned, it's a little bit hard to kind of slide this into here, whereas with the Ridge wallet, because it opens in like this landscape, you just have more like whatever, like purchase to be able to kind of like push it open to slip it in and slip it out because you've, you've got this whole wide area. Because this one, you're really just interacting. You're levering much harder. Like it's a much harder pressure to counteract like this small surface, I don't know how to say like the lever, hopefully you understand what I'm trying to say. It's like, it's just, this is much more frictionful than this one. We have so much more area and then you can kind of push it against each other much easier. The last, I guess I already said last, but one more last thing I guess here is the cash is carried exposed and it's raised up because it's folded into, into quarters, as I mentioned. So I found that this tended to just wear a little bit more um, as I would put it in and out of my pocket or in and out of the bag, which is kind of the cash would wear more prematurely than with something where like the cash is carried on the inside, for example, here. And so that kind of sums up my experience with this wallet um, over the past uh, month or so. Like I said, there's a lot of things to like about it. I like that it's customizable. I like how it looks as an object. I, I appreciate like, it's really compact 2D footprint. Um, and I, I think there are some fun interactions such as like slamming this stack of cards in just feels really satisfying here. Um, and I like that it's very secure. Nothing will ever fall out of this wallet except for the coin part of it. There are also some things that I, as I mentioned that were not great about this. Like a lot of this wallet seems to be built around the idea of like, you have a couple of things you wanna get access to often this and this basically. And then everything else is sort of just in case. And then also I found it a little bit hard to carry it in a pocket or in even a bag with other things without like maybe damaging it because of the harder surface. Um, so anyway, uh, you might want to like check it out and see if like if this appeals to you, like you might want to check it out and see if like they have like a color wear combination that you want to customize that might work for you. But if you're in the market for a wallet like this, what are some other wallets that you might want to consider? So first and foremost, the obvious competitor is gonna be the Ridge wallet. Like I said, I used the Ridge wallet for years before I moved to the Apex, before I started using this Aviator wallet here. Um, I think that the biggest differences between these two is number one, like this is a little bit thicker. Um, it has the coin tray and next to this one now has the coin tray. So that's obviously an option uh, now. So they'll change the thickness a bit. Um, this one holds up to 20 cards where I think like the Ridge, they say it tops out at, I can't remember if it was seven or 12. I would say 12 or something like that. It'll recommend, because there's no adjustability, whereas this one's adjustable. Definitely an advantage of this one. Um, I think that the Ridge, I personally found was easier to get cards and stuff in and out of for the reasons I explained. It's easier 
to kind of pull it apart like that and put you push up with this little thing. There's no cash strap or there's no like pull strap, which I found a little bit fun on here. Um, and then, you know, again, you have the cash strap is horizontal here. So I just found it a little bit easier to, to, um, you know, slip the, the cash in and out. It's just more, it's easier, less force than like with something like this, but this looks nicer and more compact. And also this one is more customizable both. I think when you, it has more options to, when you're buying it and then also you can adjust the tension after the fact here. Um, so I think like, you know, those are the two things you should really consider on whether you want like that landscape orientation versus the vertical orientation, whether you want like the concealed area versus like the kind of like thumb push out thing or whatever. Um, and you know, actually another thing I'll mention about this one is like this one handles paper tickets a lot more easily than this one does two somewhat different takes on the same genre, both with their, each with their own strengths and weaknesses. Uh, another wallet that I really love is the Bellroy Apex wallet. As I mentioned, this has uh, been my main wallet for a long time. Um, this carries everything that I've shown you inside of the Aviator wallet, sans the coins, obviously. Um, but it just does it in a much more compact in terms of like vertical height, not width, obviously. Um, form factor, it's leather and it shapes obviously over time to the contents into your pocket or whatever. It's a much more pleasant hand feeling interaction. Although this one is like, it's just very much like a physical structure object uh, interaction, which some people may like. Um, I found that it was just a lot easier to get in and out of this wallet. Um, everything inside of there, the way I would usually carry it is one card here, one card here, four cards in here, two cards in here, and then a few slips of cash in here, right? Um, and this one also, again, has this ability to carry, even on top of the credit card, like paper you know, cards or, or whatever, point cards or whatever you need, has a similar little strap to pull the, 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 the cards out of here. Um, has a little magnet that snaps shut. How do they work? Uh, and overall, like, you know, you could throw this in, 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 in a pocket with like your earphones or whatever, your phone, you don't need to worry about it scratching it. Um, not... You know, again, you're not as 2D compact, but definitely thinner than this wallet here. Uh, another wallet maybe to consider is gonna be something like, well, actually don't consider this one because this wallet is terrible. Uh, this is the, <laughs> the, what is this called? This is the Bellroy flip case, I think. Uh, I knew it was probably gonna be bad, but I bought it anyway, and it was even worse than I thought it was gonna be. This is like the worst of both worlds. It's Leather over a plastic uh, frame it has this, it, it says it can carry up to eight cards. There's no world in which this thing can carry eight cards. You're lucky to get like five to six in here. Like maybe a slip of cash. Like there's no flex. It's just, it's, you can look at this and kind of understand why this is not going to work out very well. This weird thing is supposed to separate like your cash from a couple of your cards. Like there's just no space for cards in here. Like it's, it, there's no flex either because it's made of plastic. It's like if you took the properties of this one and then like, I don't know, like the properties of this one and then like made it into something that's like bigger than this one, but like just even harder and then like less capacity than this one. I don't know. I hopefully understand what I'm trying to say. It's like, don't get this one. For the true minimalists, this is the Apple MagSafe wallet, the newest version that has like the find my functionality. Okay. Here's the deal on this one. Um, actually, I should have mentioned this. This one also can't carry coins. Uh, this one can't carry coins either. Um, here's the deal on this one. Obviously, it doesn't carry coins. It doesn't carry cash. It carries two, maybe three, but in reality, two uh, cards, credit cards. So like an ID card and a credit card. It has MagSafe, so it attaches to the back of the Apple phones. Uh, it has the Find My feature, which theoretically sounds cool. So the idea is like you can use your Find My feature on your phone to find this wallet. In reality, here's how it works. Like when this thing falls off of your phone or you, need, or you take it off your phone for longer than a minute, your phone gives you an alert that says, hey, your wallet was dropped wherever, Mountain. And then, uh, you know, you have to go back to that area and if it's still there, it's still there. What it doesn't do is tell you where it is in real time, obviously, because like, you know, it's a wallet. Um, or it's not even a wallet, it's like a card case that's of this size. So if your wallet, falls off, you don't notice, or you leave it somewhere and you get the alert and you see it within a minute, you go back and it's still there, great, you found your wallet. If somebody picks it up and moves it, you have no idea where it is. Uh, so for me, that was kind of gimmicky, I guess, and it also was annoying because like I would take 
the wallet off uh, of my phone when I'm driving in the car because I would attach the, the, the phone to like the, the holder in order to navigate or whatever, use the, the, the Google Maps or something. And then it would always pop up and alert, hey, your wallet's lost. No, it's not, it's right next to me. So anyway, um, I didn't find this very useful at all for, for the true, true minimalist doesn't need coins, doesn't need a bunch of cars, doesn't need a bunch of cash, and just wants like two extra cards with you and has an iPhone, this might potentially be a, a, an option. And so really that is it. If you have any questions about this wallet, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. And if I can, I will answer them. And if you have anything that you would like me to review, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. And if I can, I will review them. Thank you very much.